Go. Thanks, Chris. The FBI now admits it missed crucial red flags in the case of suspected Fort Hood shooter Nadal Hassan. And is the Obama administration holding back key information? That was an allegation a couple of days ago. To set things straight, uh, join us live, Michigan Congressman Pete Hoekstra, the uh, ranking member on the House Intelligence Committee. Good morning to you, sir. Hey, good morning. I heard you say a couple of days ago that the White House was, uh, essentially, the government was withholding information from you. You're on a key committee. Uh, have they loosened things up a bit now? Well, they have. I asked for a briefing last week, Friday and Saturday, uh, over the weekend. Uh, the intelligence community or the White House refused to give us that briefing. I didn't, con I didn't consider that an option for them. Their requirement is to keep us fully and timely informed. Uh, they didn't do that. Uh, they finally uh, opened up. Uh, I think things are better now. I'm hoping we're going to get all the information and transparency that we need to fully get to the bottom of what mm -hmm. happened at Fort Hood. Well, uh, you know, somebody, it, it looks like now somebody, perhaps at the FBI, should have been connecting some dots because we know back in December of last year, apparently, uh, he, this Hassan character was uh, picked up by a terrorism task force noticing that he was emailing that uh, radicalizer imam over in Yemen. And then, you know, he bought a gun just a couple of months ago. He went through an FBI check. And then apparently some of the doctors who were supervising him at Walter Reed, sir, said, we think this guy's, uh, the quote was, psychotic and capable of killing American soldiers like that guy did in Kuwait a couple of years ago. There should have been a whole bunch of red flags blowing up here. Uh, it, it appears like that. We're going to have to wait till we get all of the information. The other question we're going to have to ask, Steve, is whether... All of this information made it to a single point, to a single individual or a single investigative unit that they could have put all the dots together, or there were there some people intimidated because, you know, making these accusations could have been seen as being politically incorrect. So the information never moved through the organization and never got to where it should have gotten. Well, that, that's uh, that's a horrible idea. Also, apparently, some of these uh, doctors who were supervising him said, "Look." Fire a doctor, it's really complicated. There are a lot of forms to fill out. There could be a legal challenge. Let's just send him down to Fort Hood. Well, we knew what happened after that. Um, when you look at this new Rasmussen poll, sir, uh, that shows that uh, something like 60% of Americans say that this should be pursued as a terrorist act, um, that's what a lot of people are wondering right now. Some have suggested in the administration, well, we'll go after this as a criminal act. Is it, a, is it an act of terrorism? Uh, from my perspective, all the pieces start coming together. You know, the, the outreach to the Iman overseas, uh, the PowerPoint presentation he put together, the information that you gave uh, about some other docs and al uh, their analysis of him. I think those are all red flags. And I think the American people looked at this over the weekend and said, you know, this walks like terrorism, it talks like terrorism, it acts like terrorism. Why is this administration calling it a crime uh, or saying that this is an individual that broke? They're saying this threat from terrorism is real, right. and it appears that this administration is unwilling to recognize it. I think it hurts the credibility of the Obama administration in their efforts to combat a very, very difficult yeah. problem. But one other thing, we were chatting during the break. You told me that uh, apparently the CIA now, rather than looking for all the evildoers, are now, uh, some of them are being asked to investigate the dangers of climate change. The CIA! Yeah, we've gone through this a couple of times. We uh, we went through it with the uh, the Clinton administration when we they had a program in place which we called Bugs and Bunnies, where they dedicated CIA resources to doing climate change investigation. Uh, the CIA has now put back in place uh, that department or that little that group of people, and it's kind of like. You know, the CIA, their business is stealing secrets. I thought climate change was pretty much open source information. <laughs> We've right. got big enough problems out here. We don't need to be stealing secrets on climate change. All right. Uh, Congressman from Michigan, Pete Huckster, we thank you very much for joining us hey, today. Thank you. Thank you, sir.